All right, so let's play that for you guys real quickly. Of Matt Holiday talking about his son Jackson on his certain struggles so far. Oh, you're his dad, who has been able to adjust at every single level of baseball, single A, double A, triple A. I'm sure it'll be much of the same here. What are your expectations from him just throughout his MLB career? Well, I, I think he's obviously very talented and, and loves the game, and, and so I, I think he's going to do great. Uh, you know, obviously, you want to get that first hit out of the way, and, and uh, sometimes it it, uh, it feels like there's 20 fielders out there, but, you know, he's faced a couple of good starters, and, and uh, you know, they've made some tough pitches on him. I think one at batting, you know, five change-ups and a slider. So, you know, they're pitching him pretty tough, but um, he'll, he'll be fine. He'll be fine. He'll, uh, you, know, I, you know, it's one of those things where once you get the first hit, you kind of breathe a little bit, and then, uh, but he's, he's, a, he's a good player, and he's finding, finding ways to contribute. So you heard Matt Holiday with just high praise for his son, as you would expect. But he doesn't look at it from the, okay, I'm going to literally sugarcoat everything when I talk about my son. He's telling it how it is. And I'm sure he speaks to Jackson the same exact way that he just spoke in that interview about him. It's like, hey, like they really pitched you tough here, man. Like you were facing some good pitchers. This is what you might have to do differently. Jackson Holiday, we knew he was going to figure it out. That over 13 start, it was a minor bump in the road to his career. And I don't even want to call it that. Want to call it maybe like a mini pothole? Maybe not the ones in the roads of Maryland because they could uh, yeah, pop the tires in bad. your car. Nobody wants that. But he's a kid that is going to figure it out. He already has figured it out. And once you get that first hit out of the way, you know, the hits are just going to keep coming in. And Rip, he did talk about that specific at bat. He said, you know, pitchers have pitched him tough. Four changeups and a slider, right? And I think you have that specific at bat. We think we know which one Matt Holiday was talking about. Yeah. Pulled up on the big board, right? Yep, we got it right here, actually. This is it's the closest thing to it. So the one that he was talking about, Rock, and you can still hear me, right? Yep. Cool. So the closest thing you can have to this conversation, and there's Matt stressing. He's tired probably <laughs> from traveling. Jackson, he's been waiting for this moment for his entire career. But look, he's been pitched a lot tougher than people understand. The over 13, like Rocker, you're talking about, looks worse than it actually is. Mm -hmm. And this at bat that Matt Holiday was referencing in the conversation with Rocco. It was actually four changeups and a cutter. But first pitch, changeup, you're not looking for it, so what, right? But the next pitch, same, similar thing here. You got a cutter, slider, wherever you want to consider that pitch. And then it's another changeup. And that's a nasty changeup, by the way. And there's Matt going, please just get a hit. Because <laughs> you feel it for your son. And there's, again, a changeup. And Jackson's his body's going away from the baseball. So, therefore, he's going to roll over on the ball. Changeups are well located pitch from a veteran that's kind of been there before in Whitlock. So the overall consensus, Rock, is it's these are tough pitches. These are MLB pitchers. And didn't you reference it before? And Matt's even said there is a jump, and Jackson's had his struggles at every level. Correct. So to give the example here, Peralta, if you guys were at it, and actually, damn, that guy right up there is good looking in the top <laughs> left corner, right by the green. Um, but so Peralta was was shoving on Friday night. For the Brewers, they, they they took it to the Orioles. They took them behind the woodshed, and then the rest is history. But this is what happens when you're facing some of the best in the world. You're not going to always have the best results. This is a first pitch slider to Jackson, right? And I'm thinking to myself, ah, that I don't know where the box is, but that's a border pitch. It's not one you want to swing at, right? Strike one. Then you want to have an aggressive swing. He swings at this fastball out of the zone, right? But that's still a really good swing, good pass, fouls it off. But then what I love with Jackson, with everything he's done, it's not like he wasn't battling. He battled back to a ton of 3-2 counts throughout his 0-13 for 13 to start the season. So that was encouraging. The only problem was is that when he needed to you know, put the ball in play or have that quote-unquote hit, the pitchers made a better pitch. I mean, a slider on a 3-2 pitch in your first home game in Baltimore against the Brewers ace, in my opinion, in Peralta, I mean, just that's perfect. That's a perfectly located spot. Well, that's, that's called welcome to the big leagues. That type of location, that type of slider, and that type of situation, especially with the Brewers leading 4 nothing, And that's a lot that Jackson's going to learn. But again, competitive at bat, right? But then if we're going back to the game where he got his first hit on Sunday uh, with Ray on the mound here, I'm looking at some of these pitches. Again, good location. He's trying to be aggressive. It happens. You can say he's swinging out of the zone. But they're close enough to swing it, and then when he does miss it, he's fouling it right back. So 
for people to understand, like, again, that curveball drops in. So when you see that, right, and if that was me, you can bet your bottom dollar I'm swinging at that pitch, but it's looping up there, and it's a hittable pitch looking like these aren't mistake pitches that they're leaving out over the plate for Jackson for the most part. They're located on the corners or in, and, yes, he's expanding a little bit, but it's not like, oh, here's a gimme pitch. He's going to hit this and, and hit a tank like, like they make more mistakes in the minor leagues, right? So – as we continue to progress this, the other part is that Jackson found himself getting down 0-2. But again, when you're a rookie and you have a pitcher or pitchers that are locating this well, that's an adjustment from AAA that's different, is now that they will pinpoint more of these more specifically. It's not going to be all the time, but especially I feel like it's a, it's a phenomenon. You guys ever feel like when things go wrong, it, things just continue to go wrong? And you're like, mm-hmm. why? Why does this happen? I just stepped in a puddle or I got a parking <laughs> ticket, which I've gotten plenty of those here outside the studio, by the way. But for Jackson, it just felt like, man, I feel like I can hit these pitches, but are these actually strikes? And you're seeing that this is right on the border. That's a really good pitch. And then it doesn't help when the umpire expands the zone. So even when you're young and you get a called strike that's well outside there and I actually know that umpire back there, uh, he's a nice guy, but like I told you, you don't like any umpires because they make calls like this. That doesn't give Jackson a chance, right? So when Jackson's had a lot of moments where he had borderline pitches that went against him, where he had some really tough assignments early on, and that's just a part of you trying to figure yourself out. But then here's the moment everyone was waiting for. He gets a 99-mile-an-hour pitch that actually is probably his best pitch he's seen in a while that's middle in, gets the bat head to it, everyone can breathe, Everybody can breathe. Matt Holiday can relax as well because Rock, as you we've we've heard him say, he stresses more being a parent now on the other side. Yeah, you 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 would think because that's your dad, and you want your kid to succeed the way you succeeded throughout your MLB career. And Matt Holiday, hey Matt Holiday, he said that you know we share the same hobbies, and that that's great through the game of baseball. That, it's so cool, man, because he could have. You know, he's a dad that's proud of all of his kids, as he should be. But Matt Holiday could have had a, a son that wasn't the top prospect, and I'm sure he would have treated him the exact same way as, as Jackson now, you know, if, if he wasn't. But the fact that he is, the fact that he has this pressure on him, and the fact that he's been so successful, I think it makes it that much cooler for a baseball player to have their kid grow up and be, you know, this person to be this player, to remain calm at all times or so it seems. Listening to Jackson talk after that, um, I think it was the day he – it was his home debut, so after that. And he went on and said, you know what, it's three games. He puts things into perspective. And people were commenting. They're like, this kid is so mature. And we have to remember he is still a kid at 20 years old. But you know what? He doesn't act like a kid. He's very mature. He's he's married, number one. He – I mean, acts like a grown adult for how mature he is in the clubhouse, the way he approaches everyday life. You love that. As a fan, as a person, you want to root for Jackson Holiday because of the way he carries himself. So it's great to see. His dad's a great person, by the way. I don't want to ramble here, but seeing Matt Holiday during that interview after I went up and asked him, I swear to you guys, I was up in the press box and I looked down and that line, he was about 13, 14, 15 rows up. Him and Ethan both, signed every single piece of memorabilia for every single kid. And that line was from row 13 or 15 or whatever, all the way down to the dugout, signed everything, did the interview. That's the type of family the holidays are. That's the type of family that I root for. I'm sure you guys do as well. And that this fan base can get behind and, you know, latch onto as well. So it's great to see.